everywhere around you, but you don't pay attention to it. Yet, it plays a pivotal role in any piece of art and can separate beginner from expert simply by understanding the theory behind it. Color theory is not only knowing what a complementary color is, but also how colors affect the person seeing them and how to consistently create pleasing color schemes that will improve any artwork. So let's dive into color. Silly question, but what color would you say this cube is? If you said anything else than red, you might need to go see a doctor. Or there might be something happening with your screen that turns this color into something else. Even on my two monitors, there's a somewhat noticeable difference in how the cube looks, but it could even look orange or pink on your screen. And this shows one of the biggest issues with color working in graphic tools like Blender, color consistency. Yup, we're getting nerdy with this one, but Bear with me as this is important as a part of color theory for 3D artists like ourselves. Anyways, as artists, it's important that the colors we use are perceived similarly by the person seeing them. Especially if something is put through multiple pieces of software, we want the final product to maintain the original look consistently. And in the 3D and VFX world, this process is what we call color management. Its entire purpose is to ensure a consistent color experience between as many programs, screens, and more importantly, people as possible. As a graphic software tool, Blender obviously has color management too. Found in the render properties, the first thing that's somewhat important to note is the display device that's set to sRGB. All sRGB, or standard RGB, really does is take the lighting and color data from your render and convert that to a color space that works in most displays. Basically, all the colors get plotted in this color space and that makes sure that it works on certain screens and displays sRGB just works on most, but for example, MacBooks have a different color space than sRGB. RGB stands for red, green, and blue, which are the primary colors that the screen uses to create every other possible color through an additive process, resulting in white when all three primaries are combined. Now, I said that this was somewhat important as sRGB is the current standard color space for screens and well, there are more, but you're not going to use them anyways. But it's good to know it exists as it is the first step that Blender takes in converting your render to an image. Now, a lot more important than the display device though is the view transform and look settings. The view transform is essentially a way to convert the sRGB data color space to another one that handles the color and light differently. You could somewhat compare it to an Instagram filter and it's also commonly called tone mapping. There are seven of these view transforms in Blender. Standard, which does no conversion at all, just leaves it as sRGB. Kronos PBR Neutral, which was designed specifically for PBR color accuracy and is mostly used for product photography and rendering. AGX, which is an improved version of Filmic for more realistic results. It has 16.5 stops of dynamic range, which is sort of how it handles dark and bright areas. But I have another video on how this works specifically, which you should definitely check out after this. Filmic, similar to AGX, but worse, just don't use it anymore. Filmic log for exporting log images used in color grading, which are very flat images. False color, which is used for visualizing the exposure of your image with white being fully overexposed and black being fully underexposed. And finally, raw, which does no conversion at all and even skips the display device sRGB. As for the look settings, these are additional artistic adjustments to add more or less contrast to your final image. And I usually tend to go with like a medium high contrast or punchy if we're talking about AGX, but there usually is no right or wrong when it comes to view transforms and looks. It really boils down to your personal preference and what works best for your project. Plus, these are really just filters applied to your image in Blender, and you can still change them at any point even after rendering. If you'd like to understand color management on a way deeper level, I'd recommend checking out this deep dive by Jacob Holiday from last year's Blender conference. Super interesting, although a bit technical, but well worth a watch. Now, I tend to do a lot of research for videos like these to provide you with the best content possible, and Milanote, the sponsor of this video, helps with keeping track of all that information. Milanote is an easy to use tool to organize your ideas and projects into visual boards, whether that's a mood board, business idea, or keeping track of your brand identity, you can do it with Milanote. 
I actually use Milanote on a daily basis and for this video for example, I made an overview of color theory with added boards for color mixing, color schemes and view transforms. Using their handy color swatches, I also built an overview of the differences between RGB and CMYK, which are two of the main color spaces used these days. Milanote allows the use of images, text, arrows and layered board in board structures to create an organic and natural flow for my project. I enjoy its intuitive workflow as it really gives me the old school vibes of doing a project mood board by hand with actual magazine cutouts. Yes, I am that old. Whether it's world building for a game, providing a creative brief to a client, planning your next portfolio website, or workshopping an animation storyboard, Milanote has got it. Sharing your boards is also super convenient. You can send editor invites through email or links, or simply get a read-only link to send to clients or colleagues and ask them for feedback on your boards. Milano is available directly in your browser as a desktop application or on iOS or Android, so it's super easy to boot up and maintain for your daily project management wherever you are. And if you, like me, want to build an overview of color theory or any other passion project and its most important components, I'd absolutely recommend checking out Milanote. Milanote is free to use with no time limit, so make sure to check them out through milanote.com slash kaizen or use the link in the description or pinned comment. Thank you to Milanote for sponsoring this video and now let's get into how color really affects your artworks and can make or break it. Colors can make you relive memories, feel happy or sad, make you feel comfortable in a space or downright crazy and they can even lower the quality of your sleep. When we talk about a color digitally, it's usually made up of three components. You, saturation and value. You meaning the actual colored tint like red or blue, saturation being the intenseness of that color ranging from a pastel to vibrant, and value meaning the darkness or lightness of the color going from black to white. Now there's been a ton of studies that have been done into color and its effects on people and this branch of color theory is what we commonly call color psychology. Revolving around a set of eight colors and black and white it covers the associations and feelings that we experience through certain colors. This overview here here, cover some of the main keywords that relate to these colors, but it can go much deeper with people even using color for mental health benefits. These same color relations are commonly used throughout business and marketing with, for example, almost all finance related businesses using bluish tints in their branding to establish that feeling of trust and every dating app using warmer tones, mostly red ones, as we associate these with love. Now, we don't create art to have someone trust us like a bank would need, but we still use color to evoke emotion as 3D artists. A warm and moody color setup like I use for my recordings here, for example, is intended to give a chill and relaxing vibe to my videos. And if I make an image of an alien world in space, chances are pretty high that I won't make it a blue and green earth-like world, but red, green or even purple to convey that sense of alienness. The funny thing about color and its relations to emotions is that once you know the essentials of it, you can break the rules. It is in fact possible to create a romantic shot using cooler tones and it's equally possible to make something feel sad and alone with warmer ones. It's just going to be harder to do as you're no longer leaning on those ingrained color values that we all sort of have. Now, you can dive as deep as you want into color psychology, but just as with color management, a lot of it boils down to preference and intuition. However, using colors that relate to the story that you're trying to tell will make getting that across easier, which is specifically powerful for a still image, which lacks a lot of the context that you can provide in animation. Now, there is a lot to be said for things like cultural background when it comes to color. As an example, in most Western countries, red is seen as the color of love, excitement, danger, and urgency. That's why a stop sign is red, for example, and the same can be said for a traffic light. But in China, red symbolizes luck and happiness, and it's the color associated with their new year. Or in India, it is considered the color of purity, which is why traditionally brides wear red. Introducing these distinctions does make a difference in how you use color, yet with globalization through technology and and the internet, a lot of these sort of traditional color associations become less strong and get replaced with the more common ones that are used often in marketing and business. A very sort of dumbed down version of all of this can be split up into color moods, warm and cool. Warm tones are softer to us, often used for happier things. They can make a room feel smaller and cozier and an artwork more ecstatic. We can also see more colors in the warm spectrum as the cones in our eyes mostly process these types of wavelengths. 
Now, cool tones are harder, often used for moodier and more corporate things. They are further detached from emotions such as joy and an artwork more calm. And where warm colors have their polar opposites in cool tones, there's not only relations between color and emotions, but equally between colors themselves that once you understand them will help improve your art. The color wheel shows us the relationship between colors, usually has 12 of them and dates back to the early 18th century. Nowadays, many graphic tools use a different version of it that actually holds the nearly 16 million possible colors in the visible spectrum, just like the one in Blender. And although there's so many more colors inside of this newer version of the wheel, the principle remains the same. It serves to show the relationships between colors with the most clearly visible one being the opposing color, for example, blue and orange. But you can also use this same color wheel to find pleasing color schemes. A color scheme being a set of colors that work well together and allow you to create an aesthetic artwork. It's also commonly called a palette. Luckily, we don't have to reinvent the wheel here since there's already six color schemes that are used today. Let's begin with the most commonly used one complementary. These are the colors that are on the opposing sides of the wheel, like again blue and orange, often resulting in an image or style with high contrast and energy. It allows you to have elements pop out of the screen and one of the most famous color combinations is the orange and teal look that a lot of renders have. Next we have monochromatic. A lot of people think that this means black and white, but that's incorrect. Monochrome means using variations of a single hue, just red tones varying in shades of darkness and brightness, for example. This results in elegant and minimal images that can feel very stylized. Third, we have analogous, or a set of colors next to each other on the color wheel. Usually these are sets of three as that tends to work best, and this scheme creates a harmonious and cohesive image. It feels natural and is commonly used for environment designs, be it intentional or not. Triadic is number four and is made up of three colors that are evenly spaced on the color wheel. It creates a balanced image but is also very vibrant and can look comic-like. It's a great color scheme for stylized work and can often be seen in superhero movies and shows. Then we have Tetradic, also known as double complementary. These are two pairs of complementary colors spaced out in a rectangular fashion like so. It offers a rich and complex color scheme that needs balancing but is great for detailed scenes with a lot of elements. And finally, we have split complementary, which is again two pairs of complementary colors, but in difference to Tetradic, these pairs are adjacent to its complement. This offers the same benefit of complementary in terms of like the contrast and energy, but it takes away a little bit of the tension that the normal complementary scheme creates. It's great for a dynamic shot that needs to feel a little bit more control. Now, whichever of these schemes you choose for your project, again, be it intentional or not, balancing them is the thing that will make it really sell your artwork. And color is really important and hard to master, but without light in your scenes, there's literally no color to see. And that's why I believe that lighting is even more important in 3D than color. So check out this video here to learn more about lighting in Blender.